Chapter 5 The Egyptian Cat Jill was on holiday in Cairo with Alan, her husband. Alan was a teacher and he wanted to teach his students all about ancient Egypt. So Alan and Jill visited the pyramids and the Egyptian museum. Let's go to the market today, said Alan at breakfast on their last day. Good idea, said Jill. I love shopping. Later that morning, Alan and Jill walked through the market. There were lots of little shops there. In one of the shops, Alan bought some Egyptian pictures and in the next shop Jill saw a little white wooden dog and a black wooden cat Jill liked cats Look at this interesting cat, Alan I'm going to buy it The man in the shop spoke to Jill that's a very old cat, he said. Be very careful with it. Jill bought the cat, and she and Alan left the shop. The man called after her. Be very careful with that cat. It's magic. Jill laughed. <laughs> It isn't really magic. He says that to everybody when they leave his shop. When they got back to England, Jill put the black cat on the table in the living room. Now she had six cats from six different countries on that table. But... A week later, Jill began to find the black Egyptian cat in different places in the house. One day, it was on the chair in the living room. The next day, it was on the floor. Then, she found it in the kitchen. She told Alan about it that weekend. What? Is that Egyptian cat moving? Alan laughed. That man was right. Perhaps it is a magic cat after all. Cats were very important in ancient Egypt, you know. Don't laugh, Alan, said Jill. I don't like it. One evening, Jill came home from work and found the wooden cat in the garden. Alan, did you put the Egyptian cat in the garden? asked Jill when Alan came home. Of course not, said Alan. Is it moving again? Perhaps you need to put it away in a box. Jill began to feel afraid of the Egyptian cat. So she did put it away in a box in the bedroom. That night, Jill slept badly. The Egyptian cat appeared in her dreams. Its eyes were yellow and angry. 
What do you want? Jill asked. But the cat did not answer. The next morning, Jill woke up and saw the cat. It was on the floor next to her bed. She felt scared. I can't tell Alan, she thought. It's stupid to be afraid of a wooden cat. After breakfast, Jill walked to work. She took the Egyptian cat with her. In the street, she saw a litter bin, and she put the cat in it. Don't come back, she said, and she walked away quickly. When Jill came home that evening, she couldn't see the cat in the house. Ah,、oh, no cat, good, she thought. <coughs> Suddenly, she heard the telephone. She answered it at once. Someone from the hospital spoke to her. Your husband had an accident. They said, "His car went off the road, and into a river. He nearly died. He's alive, but he isn't very well." Jill went to the hospital at once. She saw Alan in his bed there, but he couldn't speak. She went home. And began to cry. That cat, that cat did it. It was angry with me. I wasn't careful with it. I put it in the litter bin, and Alan nearly died. What am I going to do? Quickly, Jill went out into the street to find the cat. But there were lots of litter bins in the street. Which was the right bin? Jill couldn't remember, so she looked in all of them. She was there for a long time. It was ten o'clock at night, and very dark, when Jill suddenly said, "Here it is." She carefully put the little black Egyptian cat in her bag, and took it home. She put it back on the table in the living room, with the five cats from five different countries. The next day, Alan came home from hospital. He began to feel better. Jill didn't tell Alan about the Egyptian cat, but at the weekend, she took it to a museum in London. The man there looked at it for a very long time. This cat is very, very old, he said. It's an ancient Egyptian cat. Cats were very important to the ancient Egyptians. Where did you get it? Jill told the man in the museum about the market in Cairo, and about the old man in the shop there. She told him about the times when she found the cat in different places in the house. About the time when she put it in the litter bin, and about Alan's car accident. The man didn't smile or laugh at her. 
Perhaps someone took this cat from an ancient tomb, he told Jill. In the past, bad men often took things from ancient Egyptian tombs. And when you take something from a tomb, bad things happen to you, many Egyptians believe. I see, said Jill. Now I understand. But what can I do? The cat must go back home to Egypt, said the man. You can give it to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. So the next week, Jill put the wooden cat in a little box and sent it to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Alan soon got well again after that, and Jill was happy once more with the five cats on her living room table, and she never bought a cat from a different country again. <laughs>